Hi everybody and welcome to Windows Fundamentals 1. Let's begin. The Windows operating system is a complex product with many system files, utilities, settings, features, etc. This module will attempt to provide a general overview of just a handful of what makes up the Windows OS, navigate the user interface, make changes to the system, etc. The content is aimed at those who wish to understand and use the Windows OS on a more comfortable level. Launch the attached virtual machine. The virtual machine should open within your web browser. If you want to access the virtual machine via remote desktop, use the credentials below. Accept the certificate uh, when prompted and you should be logged into the remote system now. Note the virtual machine may take up to 3 minutes to load. Okay, and now read above and start the virtual machine. Okay, so we can just start the virtual machine. And we can move on to the next uh, task, which is Windows Editions. And by the way, let's click on Complete it here first. There you go. The Windows operating system has a long history dating back to 1985, and currently it is the dominant operating system in both home use and corporate networks. Because of this, Windows has always been targeted by hackers and malware writers. Windows XP was uh, a popular version of Windows and had a long running. Uh, Microsoft announced uh, Windows uh, Vista, which was a complete overhaul of the Windows operating system. There were many issues with uh, Windows Vista. It wasn't received well by Windows users and it was quickly phased out. When Microsoft announced the end of life date for Windows XP, many customers panicked. Corporations, hospitals, etc. scrambled and tested the next viable Windows version, which was Windows 7, against many other hardware and devices. Vendors had to work against the clock to ensure their products uh, worked with Windows 7 for their customers. If they couldn't, uh, their customers had to break their agreement and find another vendor that upgraded their products to work with Windows 7. It was a nightmare for many and Microsoft took note of it. Windows 7, as quickly as it was released soon after, was marked with an uh, end of support date. Windows uh, 8.x, which by the way, by the way refers to uh, Windows 8, Windows 8.1 and Windows RT, came and left and it was short-lived, like Vista. Then arrived Windows 10, which is the current Windows operating system version for desktop computers. Windows 10 comes in two flavors, Home and Pro. You can read the difference between Home and Pro here. Even though we didn't talk about servers, uh, the current version of the Windows operating system for servers is Windows Server 2019. Many critics like to bash on Microsoft, but they have made long strides to improve the usability and security with each new version of Windows. Note, the Windows edition of the attached virtual machine is Windows Server 2019 standard, as seen in System Information. Update. As of June 2021, Microsoft announced the retirement dates for Windows 10 here. Microsoft will continue to support at least one Windows 10 semi-annual channel until October 14th, uh, 2025. As of October 5th, 2021, Windows 11 now is the current Windows operating system for end users. Read more about Windows 11 here. Okay, and now, what encryption can you enable on Pro that you can't enable in Home? And that will be BitLocker device encryption. So we can type in BitLocker like this, and we submit. Oops, I spelled something uh, wrong. Let's see, BitLocker, uh, of course, let's see right here. There you go. So we submit and we are correct. And by the way, you can find the answer right here. So if you click on that link, um, yeah, the answer is there, okay? Uh, so let's move on to the next uh, task, which is the, desk, the desktop uh, GUI. 
The Windows Desktop, aka the Graphical User Interface, or GUI in short, is the screen that welcomes you once you log into a Windows 10 machine. Traditionally, you need to pass the login screen first. The login screen is where you need to enter valid account credentials, usually a username and password of a pre-existing pre Windows account on that particular system or in the Active Directory environment, if it's, uh, if it's a domain joint machine. The above screenshot is an example of a typical Windows desktop. Each component that makes up the GUI is explained briefly below. Okay, so uh, number one, the desktop. Number two, start menu. Number three, search box. Number four, task view. Number five, task bar. Number six, toolbars. And number seven, notification area. The desktop. The desktop is where you will have shortcuts to programs, folders, files, etc. These icons will either be well organized in folders sorted alphabetically or scattered randomly with no specific organization on the desktop. In either case, these items are typically placed on a desktop for quick access. The look and feel of the desktop can be changed to suit your liking. By right-clicking anywhere on the desktop, a context menu will appear. This menu will allow you to change the sizes of the desktop icons, specify how you want to arrange them, copy or paste items to the desktop, and create new items such as a folder, shortcut, or text document. Under display settings, you can make changes to the screen's resolution and orientation. In case you have multiple computer screens, you can make configurations to the multi-screen setup here. Note, in uh, a remote desktop session, some of the display settings will be disabled. You can also change the wallpaper by selecting Personalize. Under Personalize, you can change the background image to the desktop, change fonts, themes, color scheme, etc. The Start menu. In previous versions of Windows, the word Start was visible at the bottom left corner of the desktop GUI. In modern versions of Windows, such as Windows 10, the word Start doesn't appear anymore, but rather a Windows logo is shown instead. Even though the look of the Start menu has changed, its overall purpose is the same. The Start menu provides access to all the apps slash programs, uh, files, utility tools, etc. that are most useful. Clicking on the Windows logo, the Start menu will open. The Start menu is broken up into sections, see below. This section of the uh, Start menu provides quick shortcuts to actions that you can perform with your account or login session, such as making changes to your user account, lock your screen, or signing out of your account. Other shortcuts specific to your account are your Documents uh, folder and Pictures folder. Lastly, the gear icon will take you to the settings screen and the power icon will allow you to disconnect from a remote uh, desktop session, shut down the uh, computer or restart the computer. In the below image, you can see what each of the uh, icons represents. To expand this uh, section, click on the icon that resembles a hamburger at the top. This section will show all recently added apps slash programs at the top and all the installed apps uh, slash programs that are configured to appear in the start menu. In this section, you will also see the apps slash programs uh, will be listed in alphabetical order. Each letter will have its own section. See below. In the above image, the first box is where the recently added apps slash programs will appear. The second box is where all the installed apps slash programs will appear. Note, in your virtual machine, Google Chrome will not show up as a recently added program anymore. If you have a long list of installed apps slash programs, you can jump to a particular section in the list by clicking on the letter headings to launch an alphabet grid. See below. Note, the white letters match the letter headings. The right side of the Start menu is where you'll find icons for specific apps slash programs or utilities. These icons are known as tiles. Some tiles are added to this section by default. If you right-click any of the tiles, you guessed it, a menu will appear to allow you to perform more actions on the selected tile, such as resizing the tile, unpinning from Start menu, view its properties, etc. See below.
apps slash programs can be added to this start menu section by right clicking the app slash program and selecting pin to start. See below. The taskbar. Some of the components are enabled and visible by default. The toolbar, for example, was enabled uh, for demonstration purposes. If you're like me and want to disable some of these uh, components, uh, you can right click uh, on, the, on taskbar to bring up a context menu that will allow you to make changes. Any apps slash programs, folders, files, etc. that you open or start will appear in the taskbar. Hovering over the icon will provide a preview thumbnail along with a tool tip. This uh, tool tip is handy if you have many apps slash programs open, such as Google Chrome, and you wish to find which instance of Google Chrome is the one you need to bring into focus. When you close any of these items, they will disappear from the taskbar, unless you explicitly pin it to the taskbar. The notification area. The notification area, which is typically located at the bottom right of the window screen, is where the date and time are displayed. Other icons possibly um, visible in this, uh, in this area is the volume icon, network slash wireless icon, to name a few. Icons can be either added or removed from the notification area in taskbar settings. From here, scroll down to the notification area section to make changes. Here are Microsoft's brief documents for the Start menu and Notification area. Tip: You can right-click any folder, file, app, slash program, or icon to view more information or perform other actions on the clicked item. Okay, and now let's answer the questions. So, which selection will hide uh, or disable the search box? Okay, what we need to do here is just right-click on the taskbar, hover over uh, Search, and then you click on hidden and the search bar is gone, right? Okay, or the search box. Um, uh, so, uh, so yeah, let's bring it back. So we right click on the test bar and then we hover over search and then we sh uh, click on show search box again. So it will show up again. There you go. Okay, so what we need to type in uh, here is, let's see, hidden like this, oops hidden. Perfect. Okay, which selection will hide or disable the task view button? Okay, again, we need to click on the uh, taskbar and you are going to click on the show task, uh, task view button. So we click on it and the task view uh, is um, uh, it's gone. Okay, and now if we go back and click on the taskbar again, and click on show task view button, it will show up again right here, right? Okay, so the answer is show task uh, view button. Uh, let's see, show task view uh, button like this, and we submit. Besides clock and network, what other icon is visible in the notification area? And that will be the action center icon that we see right here. Okay. Okay. So let's type that in. Action center. And we submit. And now let's move on to the next uh, task, which is the file system. The file system used in modern versions of Windows is the new technology file system, or simply NTFS. Before NTFS, there was uh, FAT16 uh, slash FAT32, and FAT stands for File Allocation Table, and uh, HPFS, which stands for High Performance File System. You still see FAT partitions in use today. For example, you typically see uh, FAT partitions in USB devices, micro SD cards, etc. But traditionally, not on personal Windows computers uh, slash laptops or Windows servers. NTFS is known as a journaling file system. In case of a failure, the file system can automatically repair the folders or files on a disk using, using information stored in a log file. This function is not possible with FAT. 
NTFS uh, addresses many of the limitations of the previous file systems, such as supports files larger than 4 GB, uh, sets specific permissions on folders and files, folder and file compression, and encryption, encryption file system or EFS. If you're running Windows, what is the file system your Windows installation is using? You can check the properties, right click, uh, of the drive your operating system is installed on, typically the C drive. You can read Microsoft's uh, official documentation on FAT, HPFS and NTFS here. Let's speak briefly on some features that are specific to NTFS. On NTFS volumes, you can set permissions that grant or deny access to files and folders. Their permissions are full control, modify, read and execute, list, folders, uh, list folder contents, read and write. The below image lists the meaning of each permission on how it applies to a file and a folder. How can you view the permissions for a file or folder? Right click the file or folder you want to check for permissions. From the context menu, select properties. Within properties, click on the security tab. In the group or user uh, names list, select the user, computer or group whose permissions you want to view. In the below image, you can see the permissions for uh, the users group for the Windows folder. Refer to the Microsoft documentation to get a better understanding of the NTFS permissions for special permissions. Another feature of NTFS is Alternate Data Streams or ADS. Alternate Data Streams uh, is a file attribute specific to Windows NTFS. Every file has at least one data stream and ADS allows files to contain more than one stream of data. Natively, Windows Explorer doesn't display ADS to the user. There are third-party executables that can be used to view this data, but PowerShell uh, gives you the uh, ability to view ADS for files. From a security perspective, malware writers have used ADS uh, to hide data. Not all its users are malicious. For example, when you download a file from the internet, there are identifiers written to uh, ADS to identify that the file was downloaded from the internet. To learn more about ADS, refer to the following link from Moware Bytes here. Bonus, if you wish to interact hands-on with uh, ADS, I suggest exploring day 21 of Advent of Cyber 2. Okay, and now let's answer the question, what is the meaning of NTFS? And that will be New Technology File System. So, New uh, Technology, technology, like this, uh, Technology File System, like this. Let me see. All right. So we spelled that right. I thought I was, uh, I spelled it wrong first, but we are correct. So let's move on to the next uh, task, which is the window slash system uh, 32 folders, the windows slash system 32 folders. I'm sorry. The Windows folder is traditionally known as the folder which contains the Windows operating system. The folder doesn't have to reside in the C drive necessarily. It can reside in any other drive and technically can reside in a different folder. This is where environment variables, more specifically system environment variables, come into play. Even though not discussed yet, the system environment variable for Windows uh, directory is what we see on the screen. Per Microsoft, uh, environment uh, variables store information about the operating system environment. This information includes details such as the operating system path, the number of processors used by the operating system and the location of temporary folders. There are many folders within the Windows folder, see below. One of the many folders is System32. The System32 folder holds the important files that are critical for the operating system. You should proceed with extreme caution when interacting with this folder. Accidentally deleting any files or folders within System32 can render the Windows OS inoperational. Read more about this action here. 
Note, many of the tools that will be covered in the Windows Fundamentals series uh, reside within the System32 folder. Okay, and now let's answer the question, what is the system variable for the Windows folder? Okay, and that will be, okay, I'm gonna type that in. So uh, first we need the uh, percent uh, symbol like this, and then we type in uh, win D I R and the percent uh, symbol again, and we submit, and there you go. Okay, now let's move on to the next uh, task, which is user accounts, profiles, and permissions. User accounts can be one of two types on a typical local Windows system, uh, administrator and standard user. The user account type will determine what actions the user can perform on that specific Windows system. An administrator can make changes to the system, add users, delete users, modify groups, modify settings on the system, etc. A standard user can only make changes to folders or files attributed to the user and can't perform system level changes such as install programs. You are currently logged in as an administrator. There are several ways to determine which user accounts exist on the system. One way is to click the start menu and type other user. A shortcut to other users should appear. If you click on it, a settings window should now appear. See below. Since you are the administrator, you see an option to add someone else to this PC. Note, a standard user will not see this option. Click on the local user account. More options uh, should appear. Change account type and remove. Click on change account type. The value in the drop down box or the highlighted value if you click the drop down is the current account type. When a user account is created, a profile is created for the user. The location for each user profile folder will fall under is uh, users on the C drive. For example, the user profile folder for the user account max will be at C drive uh, slash user slash max. The creation of the user's profile is done upon initial login. When a new user uh, account logs into a local system, uh, for the first time, uh, they'll see several messages on the login screen. One of the messages, user profile service, sits on the login screen for a while, which is at work creating the user profile. See below. Once logged in, the user will see a dialog uh, box similar to the one below, indicating that the profile is in creation. Each user profile will have the same folders. A few of them are desktop, documents, downloads, music, and pictures. Another way to access uh, this information and then some is using local user and group management. Right click on the start menu and click run. Type lusrmgr.msc. See below. Note, the run dialog box allows us to open items quickly. Back to lusrmgr, you should see two folders, users and groups. If you click on groups, you see all the names of the local groups along with a brief description for each group. Each group has permissions set to it, and users are assigned or added to groups by the administrator. When a user is assigned uh, to a group, the user inherits the permissions of that group. A user can be assigned to multiple groups. Note, if you click on add someone else to this PC from other users, it will open local users and management. Okay, and now let's answer the questions. What is the name of the other user uh, account? Okay, so what we need to do here is just click on the start menu and we click on uh, uh, or right click on the start menu. Then we click on run. Okay, and then we type in L U S uh, M, uh, let's see, S U L U S uh, R M, my bad, R M G R dot uh, M S C, and then we click on OK, and then we click on user folders, users folder, I'm sorry, uh, and then uh, we see that uh, the answer is. There you go. Try hack me Billy. Okay. So let's type that in. 
try hack me Billy and we click on submit okay and now what groups is this user a member of okay so uh, what we need to do here is you can either right click on try hack me uh, right click on try hack me Billy or on more actions uh, when you know uh, try hack me Billy uh, is uh, has been highlighted the way highlighted the way it is right now so I'll just click right click right on uh, you know on try hack me Billy like this and then you can click on properties and then you can click on member uh, member of and here are um, here are the answers uh, so or the answer to the to the question uh, so first is remote desktop uh, users and users okay so let's type the name of the groups here so uh, remote remote desktop uh, let's see uh, desktop uh, users users and then users like this and we submit perfect and now what built-in account is for guest access uh, to the computer uh, okay so uh, the answer is guest and we can see the answer if I remove this uh, we can see the answer right above uh, try hack me Billy user account right so right here guest okay so let's type that in submit and you can also read the description if you're not sure how I found about that well here is the description it basically is the same as uh, you know um, the question here so what built-in account is for guest access to the computer and we see right here in the description built-in uh, account for guest access uh, guest access to the computer right okay uh, okay so the last question here what is the account uh, status and the, what we need to do here is right click on uh, guest uh, or more actions uh, actions when guest has been highlighted the way it is right now right so again I'll just right click uh, right on 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 top of guest and uh, if we um, if we click on uh, properties we can see right here uh, that the account um, account is disabled box is, uh, is checked so the answer is account is disabled okay so we type in account let's see account is disabled like this and we submit and now let's move on to the next uh, task which is user account control The large majority of home users are logged into their Windows systems as local administrators. Remember from the previous task that any user with administrator as the account type can make changes to the system. A user doesn't need to run with high or elevated uh, privileges on the system to run tasks that don't require such privileges, such as surfing the internet, working on a Word document, etc. This elevated privilege increases the risk of system compromise because it makes it easier for malware to infect the system. Consequently, since the user account can make changes to the system, the malware would run in the context of the logged in user. To protect the local user with such privileges, Microsoft introduced User Account Control or UAC. This concept was first introduced with the short-lived Windows Vista and continued uh, with versions of Windows that followed. Note, UAC by default doesn't apply for the built-in local administrator account. How does UAC work? When a user with uh, an account type of administrator logs into a system, the current session doesn't run with elevated permissions. When an operation requiring higher level privileges needs to execute, the user will be prompted to confirm if they permit the operation to run. Let's look at the program on the account you're currently logged into, the built-in administrator account. Right click to view its properties. Uh, in the security tab, we can see the user slash groups and their permissions to this file. Notice that the standard user is not listed. And we can see that uh, in the image below, of course. Log in as the standard user and try to install this program. 
To do this, you can remote desktop into the machine as the standard user account. Before installing the program, notice the icon. Do you see the difference? When you're logged in as the standard user, the shield icon is the program's default icon. See below. This shield icon is an indicator that UAC will prompt to allow higher level privileges to install the program. Double click the program and you see the UAC prompt. Notice that the built-in administrator account is already set as the username and prompts the account's password. See below. After some time, if a password is not entered, the UAC prompt disappears and the program does not install. This feature reduces the likelihood of malware successfully compromising your system. You can read more about UAC here. Okay, and now let's answer the question, what does UAC mean? And the answer is user account control. So user account control like this and we submit and now we can move on to the next uh, task which is settings and the control panel on a Windows system the primary locations to make changes are the settings menu and the control panel for a long time the control panel has been the go-to location to make system changes such as adding a printer uninstall a program etc the settings menu was introduced in Windows 8, uh, the first Windows operating system that catered to touchscreen tablets and is still available in Windows 10. As a matter of fact, the settings menu is now the primary location a user goes to if they're looking to change the system. There are similarities and differences between the two menus. Below are screenshots of each. Note, the icons for settings might be different in the version of Windows on your personal device. Both can be accessed from the start menu, see below. Control panel is the uh, menu where you access more complex settings and perform more complex actions. In some cases, you can start in settings and end up in the control panel. For example, in settings, click on network and internet. From here, click on change adapter options. Notice that the next window that uh, pops up is from the control panel. If you are unclear which to open, if you wish to change a setting, use the start menu and search for it. In the example below, the search was uh, wallpaper. Notice that few results were returned. If we click on the best match, a window to the settings menu appears to make changes to the wallpaper. Okay, and now let's answer the question. In the control panel, change the view to small icons. What is the last setting in the control panel view? Okay, and that's very easy to do. Let's just uh, close uh, this right here. Uh, and what we need to do here is just click on the, uh, on the start menu and then click on control panel. Let's just give it a second. Okay, there you go. And now uh, go up here and change this to small icons. And here is our answer. So Windows Defender Firewall. Okay, so let's type that in. Windows, let's see, Windows uh, Defender Firewall like this. Okay, and we submit. All right, and now let's move on to the next uh, task, which is Task Manager. The last subject that will be touched on in this module is the Task Manager. The Task Manager provides information about the applications and processes currently running on the system. Other information is also available, such as how much CPU and RAM are being utilized, which falls under performance. You can access the task manager by right-clicking the taskbar. Task manager will open in simple view and won't show much information. Click on more details and the view changes. You can refer to this blog post for more detailed information about the task manager. If you wish to learn more about the core Windows processes and what each process is responsible for, visit the core Windows processes room. 
Okay, and now let's uh, answer the question, what is the keyboard shortcut to open task manager? And that will be control shift escape. Okay, so let's type that in. Uh, so uh, C T R L plus, let's see the plus sign. Where do I have the plus sign on my keyboard? <laughs> okay, there it is. And then we have a uh, shift and then plus again, uh, escape like this. And let's submit and we are correct. And now let's move on to the uh, last uh, task, which is conclusion. Again, this was a generic overview of the Windows OS. There are intermediate and advanced topics for each topic task that was covered in this room. Hence, uh, task uh, 9 ended with a detailed blog post explaining the task manager in great detail. In future modules, we'll cover topics like the Windows folder, the management console, security tools, Windows Defender, Windows Firewall, etc., to name a few. Okay, and now let's uh, terminate the, the machine. So uh, we click on terminate right here. There you go. And we click on complete it. And we are done with this room. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, I would really, really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos on Try Hack Me. Okay, everybody, talk to you next time.